Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1451 of our trek, and it is Worldview Wednesday. Creating a biblical worldview is essential to have a proper perspective on today's current events. To establish a biblical worldview, you must have a proper understanding of God and His Word. This week on our Worldview Wednesday episode, we will continue with our study based on a course that I recently completed, taught by Dr. Michael S. Heiser. Our study is titled, Sons and Daughters of God, The Believer's Identity, Calling, and Destiny. Throughout this multi-week course, we will demonstrate that the Old Testament, Sons of God, and Holy Ones refer to supernatural beings whose Father is God and who work with God to carry out His will and that this divine family was present before all of humanity. By fully engaging the biblical texts such as Psalm 82, Psalm 89, and Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 8 and 9, our study will show that this design family functions as a template for God's human family. God desires of human, as His imagers, to participate in His counsel. This study addresses issues such as polytheism and the nature of little g-gods and the uniqueness of Yahweh. Within this study, we will apply insights to the New Testament text that shows how the metaphor of being in God's family informs us of our own sense of identity and mission as believers. Today, we're going to look at shared rule with the Heavenly Council. And we're going to look at two segments. First one is segment number eight, Participation in God's Covenant, Part 1. First, we want to see that participation is not artificial. I bring up this issue of predestination really for one reason. That is, I want to make a point that participation in God's counsel, participation in carrying out God's will, isn't artificial. That is, God uses the members of His family to carry out His decrees, and He allows them freedom, creativity, and input. However, He wants us to think about this in carrying out His will and getting done the thing that He wants to get done. Participation is going to be part of the template for understanding our role in God's program. Even though this is a bit of a sidebar, sort of a little abstract, it is essential to include in our thinking, because when we talk about participation, this term is going to come back later in the course when we talk about imaging. The whole concept of being created as God's imager really matters to God, as we're going to see, and God lends us His attributes, one of which is freedom and He allows us to use those attributes to be who we are in carrying out His decisions. Next, we want to think about not everything is predetermined. Let's consider an example or two from the Old Testament, where God and the decisions He makes does not have everything predetermined. This mindset is going to matter how we process what we do as God's servants, as God's children in His family business, His family bureaucracy. So the question before us, isn't everything predestined? I have already said, I sort of tipped my hand here last week. The answer is still no. But you might ask, do we have scriptural evidence for that? I'm going to take us on a short detour through 1 Samuel 23 to obtain a needed perspective. This perspective is going to be an ingredient in understanding the importance of actually working with God, being co-laborers in what He wants us to do. It is not artificial, it is meaningful, and it actually counts. So let's take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 23 And that moves us into segment number 9, which is Participation in God's Government, Part 2. First, as an introduction to this section, I'm going to read 1 Samuel 23, verses 1 through 13, to get us a flavor for this notion about predestination and how God looks at the future. There is going to be an implication in this passage that is important for us as we, later in this course, think about our participation in God's program. 1 Samuel 23, verses 1 through 13 reads like this. Now they told David, Behold, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah and are robbing the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go attack the Philistines? And the Lord said to David, Go and attack the Philistines and say, Keilah. David's men said to him, Behold, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more if we go to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines? 
Then David inquired of the Lord again, and the Lord answered him, Arise, and go to Keilah, for I will give the Philistines into your hand. And David and his men went to Keilah, and fought with the Philistines, and brought away their livestock, and struck them with a great blow. So David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. The son of Elimelech had fled to David and Keilah. He had come down with an ephod in his hand. Now it was told to Saul that David had come to Keilah. And Saul said, God has given him into my hand, for he has shut himself in by entering into a town that has gates and bars. And Saul summoned the people to go to war, to go down to Keilah, to besiege David and his men. David knew that Saul was plotting against him, and he said to Abathar the priest, Bring the ephod here. Then David said, O Lord, the God of Israel, your servant has surely heard that Saul seeks to come to Keilah to destroy the city on my account. Will the men of Keilah surrender me into his hand? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? O Lord, the God of Israel, please tell your servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. And David said, Will the men of Keilah surrender me and my men to the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will surrender you. Then David and his men, who were about six hundred, arose and departed from Keilah, and they went wherever they could go. When Saul was told that David had escaped from Keilah, he gave up his expedition. So let's look at a summary of 1 Samuel chapter 23, verses 1 through 13. Now do you see the relevance of the predestination question? David was in a jam. Saul was going to come down. He was in the process of coming down to Keilah to encircle the city. Classic siege warfare tactics, trapping David inside. And of course, when he does that, he's going to say to the men of Keilah, Look, I am going to sit here as long as it takes. I will starve you out. I will cut off your water supply. Because that is just something you do in siege warfare. Then Saul would have said, Hand David over to me, and nobody gets hurt, and I'll be out of here. And I'm paraphrasing as David asked of God, You know, is this going to happen? Is Saul going to come down and besiege the city? Well, the men of Keilah hand me over to Saul. And God says, You bet. He says yes to both things. And so, what happens? David does what you and I would do. He leaves the city. This is a classic example of foreknowledge, but not predestination. So what are the implications? Here is what we are aiming at. God in this passage foreknew two things that never happened. That tells us that foreknowledge does not necessitate predestination. God foreknew two things that never came to pass. His foreknowledge did not necessitate the predestination of those events because they never happened. Now this is going to matter in later weeks when we get into Genesis chapter 1, the fall. Humans are added to the divine family, and God shares his attributes with them, one of which is freedom. When God has his intelligent family members, whether they are divine beings or whether they are human beings, when he tasks them with participating with him and working in his program, his plan, his will, that's going to happen in real time. So this brings us to the conclusion for today, What we do actually matters. Yes, God knows what's going to happen. He knows all things, real and possible. The possible things, at least a lot of them, don't always happen, even though God foreknows them. So we again learn a lesson here. What God tasks us to do in our time, in our place as His children, as His co-workers, what we do actually matters. We are not robots. Everything is not pre-programmed. We'll address these thoughts in subsequent weeks as we talk about imaging. For now, we need to get back to the nature of God's family, the other Elohim. We know that they are not the Trinity. We know that they are not idols. And we talked about why God doesn't really need a council, but this is what he uses. So next week, we'll get back to some of the other questions and wrap them up in our study. And that will conclude segment 8 and 9 of our study, Sons and Daughters of God, The Believer's Identity, Calling, and Destiny. Join us again next week as we explore other objections to God's divine and earthly counsel. I believe you will find each Worldview Wednesday contains thought-provoking topics to consider as we build our biblical worldview. Tomorrow we will continue with our three-minute humor nugget, which will provide you with a bit of cheer, which will help you to lighten up and live a rich and satisfying life. So encourage your friends and family to join us, and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek. Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,450 treks or read the Wisdom Journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. 
And I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor. But most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward. Enjoy your journey and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.